to know in six minutes starts now. It's the last vote in the midterm elections. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. The Senate runoff in Mississippi where the polls are now just opening. I believe that I'm the candidate to take Mississippi into the third decade of the 21st century. I'm talking about jobs and health care. Former Democratic Congressman Mike Espy challenging Republican Cindy Hyde-Smith, who was appointed to replace Senator Thad Cochran. I will continue to stand up for the conservative values of Mississippi. President Trump campaign for Senator Hyde-Smith last night brought up the migrants in Mexico. We're sending a clear message to the caravans and to the trespassers. Turn around, go back home. Hundreds rushed the border trying to get in near San Diego Sunday, driven back by tear gas. Thousands more remain camped out in Tijuana, hoping to get asylum in the U.S., including Eduardo from Honduras, who told Fox this morning. It's not easy because, uh, you know, eat good, you, you eat only one time a day, you're drinking quite a little bit. Paul Manafort is in hot water again. The former Trump campaign chairman already convicted in the special counsel's investigation, now accused of lying. Fox's Rachel Sutherland, live in Washington. Dave Manafort has been cooperating with special counsel Robert Mueller since he struck a plea deal in September. But now prosecutors say they'll no longer uphold their part of the agreement because he's been lying. Manafort's lawyers say he's been providing truthful information to investigators. But they've also asked a federal judge in Washington to set a sentencing date. The 69-year-old who's been in solitary confinement can now face additional charges in the lengthier prison term. Dave. Well, Rachel, the president just tweeted it's a phony witch hunt that Mueller has gone rogue in the Russia probe. The fake news media builds him up as a saint. The president wrote it's the exact opposite. He's ruining lives. In Northern California, it's now up to 88 people dead in that wildfire that burned down more than 13,000 homes. The number still unaccounted for is down to about 200. This is Fox News. It's the holiday sales event at Ford. It's a big deal. And we're busy making preparations to get you the best deals of the year. Because unlike Santa's presents, ours don't just magically appear. At Ford, ours are built in real factories. Where pickup trucks come with best-in-class towing and payload. Where SUVs are built with available features like terrain management and driver assist technologies. And where every bolt, stitch, and line of code is tested. And tested again. But you don't have to write Santa a letter to get these presents. Naughty or nice, just come see your Ford dealer during our holiday sales event for our best offers of the year. Ford. Built for the holidays. Built Ford Proud. Best in class towing and payload when properly configured. Classes light duty pickups under 8,500 pounds GVWR based on Ford segmentation. Legal marijuana sales took their first ever step towards reality Monday in the legislature with endorsement by two committees. Some critics suggest the bill is mostly about generating tax revenue for the state. But Senate President Steve Sweeney insists that is not the case. This isn't a budget deal. I want to commit that to you. That's why I'm fighting for the tax rate to be lower. We're trying to avoid the black market and higher taxes only bring more black market business. The bill would allow for a state tax rate of 12 percent, on top of which local cities and towns could add another 2 percent. Governor Murphy had wanted a tax rate as high as 25. Included in the package is a bill to allow those arrested for possessing small amounts of marijuana to have their criminal records expunged. The only couple indicted in that huge Lakewood welfare fraud scandal is pleading not guilty. Kayyem and Leah Ehrman, accused of stealing more than $185,000 in benefits of the dozens accused. They're the only ones so far indicted. The others are still negotiating plea deals. I'm Eric Scott. This is the Town Square News Network. This is Tracy Thompson, New Jersey's acting insurance fraud prosecutor. Insurance fraud is providing false information to an insurance company in order to receive compensation or benefits. It may include filing a false claim or exaggerating damages, injuries, or other losses. Insurance fraud costs New Jerseyans billions of dollars every year. Together, we can stop it. Go to njinsurancefraud.org for details. Insurance fraud. Report it. 
ended. Dry but windy weather takes over the forecast for South Jersey over the next several days. We could see gusts to 30 miles an hour today with mostly sunny skies, high temperatures in the lower to mid 40s. It'll still be breezy tonight and partly cloudy. Lows in the lower to mid 30s, but the wind chiller feels like temperature only in the 20s. A blustery day tomorrow, gusts to 35 miles an hour with highs limited to the lower 40s, a mix of sun and clouds, and then one more breezy day Thursday with lots of sun, highs climb to the upper 40s. I'm Chief Meteorologist Dan Zarawan. WPG Talk Radio 104.1. From Harry Hurley Way in the world's playground to the broadcast pioneers of Philadelphia Hall of Fame. I want to congratulate my friend, Harry Hurley. You're about to find out why Harry Hurley has been named to the Talkers Magazine list of the 100 most important talk show hosts in the nation. Live from the studios of Town Square Media in Northfield, it's Hurley in the Morning on WPG Talk Radio 104.1. Ladies and gentlemen, a just a staple of our weekly diet for 27 seasons, Chuck Malamut has owned the 8 o'clock hour. Today, uh, Tibbet has a lease with an option to buy for the final 10 minutes. Chuck is a financial guru, can, can appreciate that, um, that little quip from his little brother. Chuck is the official, the exclusive financial advisor for the Hurley in the Morning program. Chuck is the managing director. He leads his team, the Malamuk Group, at Morgan Stanley's Northfield, New Jersey office to reach Chuck and his team for all of your financial planning needs. The number to call is 609-383-2010. The program you're about to listen to is presented, sponsored by Chuck Malamut, a financial advisor at Morgan Stanley. The information, views, and opinions expressed on this broadcast are those of Chuck do not necessarily reflect those of Morgan Stanley or its affiliates. They are current as of the date of this broadcast, subject to change without notice. Neither the information provided nor any opinion expressed herein constitutes a solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security. This presentation is for informational purposes only. Morgan Stanley, Smith Barney, member SIPC. And I know, Chuck, you don't live and die on any one particular day, but yesterday was a good day on Wall Street. Good morning, Harry. Good morning. Hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. We did, and I know you traveled well, and you did too. <laughs> we did, and it's uh, it's amazing. You have a new tradition, right? We do, and it's it's our second annual. It's kind of um, it's kind of amazing. It's it, just to take a minute out of the out of the show here. Uh, when when you know people ask, well, where are you going for Thanksgiving? I said, well, my sister in law and her ex- extended family lives in Iowa, and I always get. There's always a pause, and almost like, like well, you, you have say, to go then, right? Say, you could you couldn't say, possibly want to go. So, so and they say Iowa. Did you see Cory Booker while you were there? Uh, no, I was looking for okay. him. I couldn't. He was there. <laughs> I know. I, just, <laughs> I never enough gas in my car to go find the guy. But, uh, but, but in any case, you know, it's. I think all of us here on the East Coast really have no don't we really don't have a fair appreciation for. What happens sort of out of our lane? It's true. And so, in other words, change is good. Yeah, it is. And the fact of the matter is my that gosh. then when you look at Des Moines, Iowa, uh, and that's where, where that's where we were for several days, uh, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, all are locating there. Wow. And they're doing a lot of their cloud operations, and they're employing anywhere from 150. To four hundred people. Uh, per, is, it, is it booming there right now? It. it, it I mean, we were there a year ago. Like tech, and right? Heavy we, tech. We were there a year ago, and and I will tell you where you know where we stay. Um, yeah, there's a lot of work in progress, and it's it's just there's construction everywhere, and, and the fact of the matter is, um, <laughs> how do I say this and not be terribly disrespectful to everyone that that we work and live with around here? Okay, it's. I mean, they they you know they stop and let you walk across the street. Oh, in other words, they're nice. Yes, that's they, what you're saying. <laughs> they, extreme, extremely nice to the point of saying, "Wow, is this like?" You mean they're not it, beeping when the light turns yellow for you to be going? No, <laughs> you're in the elevator. We, we we stayed not too far from my sister in law. And instead you know, of pushing the closed the, door no, 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 20 the, times real fast, they actually wait for you to get In on. the elevator, hey, good morning. How was your day? How was your Thanksgiving? I'm saying, wow, this is <laughs> – You know what I think I thought, is, I, I thought I was like in a, in a three-, four-day dream, Harry. Yeah, I want to join you in this misery that we're creating because we love our area. But we – if you go to New York, for example, we're nice 
compared to New York. I think we're nicer than North Jersey. North Jersey's a little nicer than New York attitude. I think it's degrees of just <laughs> that kind of culture. It, it is, Harry. And, and I, I, I continually thought about, you know, everyone back back home here. As I'm saying, you know, if, if it wasn't – if we weren't so landlocked out there, it's really – you know, and, and you know, we all have sand in our shoes. It's really a, a pretty nice place right now, and 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 I I don't think that any of us really uh, give the credit that it's deserving of of that particular. Are you city already looking state. forward to next year Thanksgiving dinner in Iowa? Absolutely. I so mean, this it, is like this is uh, well. Be- I mean, extended. I mean, my my sister in law's husband has an extended family. They're there. They're within driving distance. Um, I would say there's about 45 people there. So do you, Pam, Frankie, and Marley go? We all go. You all go. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's, it's sure. now. Because it's, it's you have adult children now. It's so the, I just Griswold, sure. the Griswold vacation. Griswold family vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's on top of the uh, on top of the roof rack in, 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 a, in a rocking chair with a tarp over. <laughs> no, but all the – I mean, I, I know that there's, you know, a, a lot of, of news and newsworthy events surrounding Thanksgiving and – uh, you know, it's such a tough travel holiday, um, but I will tell you that everything was perfect from start to finish. And great. So it was, it was well just, deserved. <laughs> so, but I did miss you, Harry. I got, I, I got because you know you were and, always invited to stay with us at, at our Thanksgiving. Oh, I, I know, but I wanted to come over. And, I wanted to come over and visit you at your oh, at, at the, the game. game. Yeah, it went um, well. Uh, game wasn't much of a game, no. it sounds like, but, but it's a great community it experience. Is. It is. So, yeah. in, in any case. So let's let's get on it. So yeah, you're you know I was thinking about this actually, uh, you know, yesterday uh, pre market and during the day. Uh, negative media. Kind of a question on Iowa, and then we'll get right to the uh, market update. Do they have trees or is it just cornfields? <laughs> they have trees. Is that too. great? Yes, Kirk, you're the man. I love it. I just sent him a high five. Uh, yeah, they have trees. Yeah. So. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> so so a- anyway, I was you know when you look at the at at, at the negative bias of the, of the media and a perfect case in point is you know that that station that we all are sort of forced to watch um that is just filled with commercials that on occasion gives you news about the markets uh yesterday is an example pre-market the indices were up pretty big and during the day they were up big and they closed up big for the yeah. day and and literally virtually virtually got got no attention now on on negative days when the dow is down 100 points they you know it's the it's, size of the graphic it's, it's, they make it it's splashed all yes, over the place so it's true. so we returned from thanksgiving you know the, the holiday friday was not a great day it was a shortened day and there were a lot of people that were off the S and P was up one point six percent for the day. The Dow was up about three hundred fifty points, and the Nasdaq gained about two point one percent. So, so the question at hand here is: This a, a relief rally? You know, following a, a pretty sharp sell off last week, when where the S and P was down almost four percent. You know, there was a lot of discussion, a lot of optimism around. The start of the, of the holiday season, uh, the consumer discretionary sector, you, you know, moved higher. Financials, technology, communication services all gained uh, as in, as investors piled into into these cyclical stocks. Um, oil finally had had a positive day. It's been it's been a long time. Uh, and we and, are and the number one. We are. Oil yeah, we talked we, we talked about that actually. I think we talked about it last week we or the did. week before. So. Yep. So things were pretty good in Europe and, uh, yesterday in Asia this morning. We're down a little bit today. And, and you know, I, I think what is happening here is that, you know, um, strategists, um, analysts, uh, TV, media, hypesters, um, they, they all kind of pile on. And, and now it's it, – it, this is so reminiscent, Harry, of, of, you know, everybody going to the same side of the boat together. And we've talked about this before. The, the, and what happens when you put everybody on the same side of the boat? So the, the question at hand is, and, and you know, we're asked this every day, is this a, a sell-off in a, or a correction in a longstanding bull market? Or, are we, or is the market, in fact, you know, entering into a quote-unquote 
bear market after you know a decade. Mm-hmm. Think about it—a decade-long you know bull now, market. The, and the, the Morgan Stanley Research um, arm. <laughs> They made a statement, didn't they? Well, 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 they did, and and interestingly enough, they broke it at about five a.m. yesterday, and this was—I I don't think this was anything that we that we haven't talked about of late. Um, you know, our, our chief strategist, you know, has been moving away from technology into more of your value stocks, your dividend paying. Um, that's not to say that technology is dead by any way, shape, or form, but there's been a sort of a gradual shift, and then the. Then, then the, the, another one of our strategists, our global strategists, came out and said, "Look, we, you know, Morgan Stanley analyst strategists think that there is a higher probability of emerging markets, um, overseas markets, uh, performing better than domestic U.S. and." I think a lot of that is driven around, you know, the, that are, we're so long into this rally. And, and the fact of the matter is, as you and Kirk talked about, and um, maybe I'm starting to believe it, and even though I can't believe I'm about ready to say He's this. He's going to say it, kids. Uh, I mean, the, the fact that they're going to probably come in December, I mean, that's pretty much the Fed. It's, it's pretty much understood that that increase is going to wouldn't, happen. Wouldn't you think, though, the entire year gains being wiped out? Now, I know that the, 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 the market – had a nice day yesterday, and there still is a month and a few days to go. But wouldn't that be enough evidence to not do that in December? Well, I, I think when you – I mean, we've always kind of talked about this. The, the Fed is supposed to be uh, held, you know, sort of by themselves, mm-hmm. uh, not tuned in to the president's wishes. The fact of the matter is that they are – they, I think they spend more time looking through the rearview mirror than they do driving forward. Well, they, and, knew, and, they and, knew not to raise interest rates for almost 10 years. Then why don't they pay attention on that might now might not be a good time to continue? Well, I think that, that uh, Chairman Powell's comments on October 3rd, you know, where he basically, I think, kind of moved the needle and said, look, we're not we're not near where we need to be uh, and and and. and Basically, signal to the market that we're that we're going to not only increase, you know, in December, but there's going to be multiple hikes after that. And then, and then, uh, we all know what happened in October. Yep. Uh, we had staged somewhat of a comeback in November, and now we're sort of it's it's choppy again, uh, with still a fair amount of vol- volatility, you know, in the markets. But you know, Harry, let me let me go back to after the break. We'll come right back to it. Don't go away. Cliffhanger. 17 minutes past the hour. Chuck Malamut is here. For all of your financial planning needs, turn to the Malamut Group, 609-383-2010. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. Councilman at large of Atlantic City, George Tibbet, will join us for the last 10 minutes of this hour as we continue the discussion that we started at the end of the last hour. Early in the morning, WPG Talk Radio 104.1. When you listen to WPG Talk Radio 104.1, you're tuning in to living a healthier lifestyle. How? WPG Talk Radio 104.1 and Virtual Health are united on one mission for a healthier, happier New Jersey. Virtual Health is so much more than just hospitals. Did you know they also offer sports medicine, nutrition, weight loss, and fitness services? Anytime you listen to WPG Talk Radio 104.1, visit WPGTalkRadio.com or when you join the 1450. Club, you'll be connected to health and wellness information featuring exercise and nutrition tips and health risk assessments. And you can sign up to win concert tickets, gift cards, and more. Together, Virtua and WPG Talk Radio 104.1 have set out on the mission to make good health even more rewarding. Be well, get well, stay well. Virtua for life. Join the 1450 Club now for good health and a chance to win great prizes at WPGTalkRadio.com. Are you drowning in IRS tax debt? I owe the IRS $37,000. Get ready for a toll-free hotline. Take advantage of new IRS tax forgiveness programs that may protect you from IRS collection agencies. They have the power to garnish your wages, put liens on your property, and levy your bank account. Civic Tax Relief can help protect you from the IRS. Civic Tax Relief basically represented me against the IRS, and by the time everything was completed... 
I didn't know the IRS anything. Find out about the Fresh Start program that is now available through Civic Tax Relief. Civic Tax Relief's special tax hotline can help you discover all the relief programs available for free. I would recommend anyone who has a tax problem to contact Civic Tax Relief. Just call 800-315-9956. 800-315-9956. Don't wait. Call now. 800-315-9956. 800-315-9956. This is EHT's Talk Station. WPG Talk Radio 104.1 and WPGTalkRadio.com. 20 minutes past the hour with Chuck Malamut of Morgan Stanley fame. I am early in the morning. This is Chuck's weekly program, all about your financial matters. And we had so, a so, yeah, so Harry, what I, where I was going before the break was, again, is this a – the correction that we have l- recently lived through, is it, a, um, is it a correction in the longstanding bull market or are we entering into a, a bear market? So, so think about this for a second. What do you think most people would think? I think – well, I, I think I, most people I, I think think. Most people think – that this is a bear beginning of a bear market yeah, I because agree. I think while while some things have changed uh, with with the economy, the fact that I think we've done a very good job convincing ourselves of this, we kind of talked ourselves into it. And, how, how do you and, go, and, how do you guard against a self fulfilling prophecy? Well, I, I think there's a couple of things that you have to recognize here, and and so so the S and P last Friday closed. You know, forget yesterday's gain for a minute. It closed at two thousand six thirty three. That's a 10.2 percent drop from the all-time closing high that we that we made back on September the 20th. That decline, that 10 percent move down, it was the sixth drop of a 10 percent movement or more during the bull market that we have started. That we started back in March of 2009. So, a 10 percent correction on average happens about every. We'll call it every twenty months during the bull run that we that we you know have uh, lived through from from two thousand and nine. So the the prior correction that ended back in February of this year was just ten months ago. So I, I think what what oftentimes in investors think about is the fact: well, we just had a correction in February, and now we have another one in October. Mm-hmm. Is so? Are, are we at the point in time where this is more the norm, and are we going to, in fact, you know, enter that quote bear market where we have, you know, obviously no no returns or marginal returns? How much how much blame would the Fed receive for slowing down the economy if this is indeed what's happening? I think I think a fair amount of it. Yeah. I mean, you think you think about you know where we've moved with rates and and when chairman powell did make a statement in the beginning of october you know the market you know reacted very very quickly in a in a negative bias what, what was the rush i mean a 10 year environment where there were no increases and then just warp speed basically i know they were 25 basis points at a clip but so many of them. What what was the rush? Well, I think economically. I mean, you know, think about it. The, you know, the, the, we, the, we the health of the economy warranted the moves. I, I, yeah, I mean, that's that's the position they're going to take. You know, you, you now you know you you have more more jobs than people. Uh, y- y- the cost of wages is starting to increase because you you don't have enough jobs, or you don't have enough people to fill jobs. However, if you take a look at just yesterday. You know, GM, you know, made it, you know, in the middle of the day, G, you know, uh, GM stopped trading pending news. And the news is we're going to lay off with 13, 14, I think it was 14,800 people um, in in a number of, I think it was either four plants. I don't quote me on that for sure. But, you know, f- affecting pretty much Ohio, uh, you know, Michigan to a certain degree. So, the, you know, the fact of the matter is, you know, you know we're, we're moving away from sedans. And the, I think the Sh- the Chevy Volt was was being manufactured in one of those plants, yeah. and unfortunately, that has not worked out. And you know, obviously, you trucks know, and SUVs are what yeah, people and want. So, and 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 a lot of that is due to lower oil prices mm-hmm. or lower prices at the pump, which is in fact happening now. We talked about that last week as well. So, yeah, um, you know, so the question is: is this is this is this a matter of 
a correction or are we now entering into a bear market? So you think about, Harry, again, September 20th when we made that all, all-time high. Total market capitalization in the U.S. Mar- US stock market has dropped $3.4 trillion mm. to $29 trillion as of the close of business of, as of last Friday. So think about, you know, we're now at twenty nine trillion. I mean, those numbers seem astronomical. You know, it was you know it was thirty you know thirty two thirty three million higher. It was not higher. Thirty. It was thirty two thirty three million. You know, less than six mm-hmm. six eight weeks ago. And the the question at hand is like, you know, has the world changed that much? You know, negatively in a, in a matter of a short period of time. But unfortunately, in our world, what happens is. You know, you just sort of, you know, shoot now and ask questions later. So when you look across all asset classes, you know, the Dow, you know, year to date is is up ever so slightly. And in a day like yesterday can make a move, you know, so we're up probably close to one and a half, two percent. The Nasdaq up, you know, call it three. The S&P called up two percent. Bonds are, you know, bonds are down, you know, year to date as we've had these increases in not only short term, rates, but long rates. And we can talk about that as far as mortgages are in a, mi- in a minute. But, you know, the year-to-date return on a 10-year treasury is actually a 3.1% loss. So the really what is happening now is that investors are being rewarded for having money in cash or cash equivalents. I mean, you, you need to get, you know, your listeners really need to pay attention to this, Harry. You know, the banks are very slow to react, as you know. Uh, you know, people have money just sitting in checking accounts, sitting money and having money sitting in savings accounts. You can right now a money market government a government money market mutual fund uh, yielding about two point one percent. And so you think about it. I mean, that's a pretty big move from First twenty time in a while. from you know one quarter of one percent to over two. Yeah. And you have obviously immediate liquidity on the on those assets. So you know your invest your listeners and investors really need to, as we get to year end and do the, the tax harvesting, you really need to take a look at your cash balances, and where that cash is and what it's earning for you. Chuck, two minutes before the bottom of the hour break, and I noticed Chuck has on his uh, to do list always about ten or more topics, and we usually throw a couple in that aren't even on the on the list. So th- this is no exception this week. Chuck has about 10 major items that he wants to cover during his program. Student loan debt usually makes the cut, but I always notice it was down towards the bottom. You've moved it up towards the middle of your list. Is that, <laughs> no, is that significant? No, no particular reason. Well, but, I, I'm going to make, it, I'm make it significant but, but because it, I think it, this is the next big thing. You know, it, it, it is. And we've, we've talked about this in nausea. So you know, outstanding student debt right now. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, at, at outstanding student debt loan loan debt right now was 360 billion in 2005. Right Tell now, us now, Chuck. Right now, <laughs> thank you, Harry. It's devastating. Right now, we are at 720 billion. I actually thought we were okay. over a trillion. Um, it, no, let me let me let me back it up. I'm 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 misquoting. Let's start over again. Three hundred sixty billion in two thousand and five, doubling to seven hundred twenty billion in two thousand and nine, doubling again yeah. to one point four four trillion as of the end of September. So, so you think about <laughs> three sixty seven twenty one point four four trillion, and we've had numerous discussions um, about the the quote the college system. Mm-hmm. And I really think, to a certain degree, it's kind of rigged. Yeah, the game is rigged against the, against um, the students student and the parents and families. Yeah, yes. I, I mean, you think about it. You know, you get your tuition bill, and well, you know, it's up three, four percent. Chuck, how about I know somebody that's taken multiple courses at a big university, came to a different uh, university, and they make you take the same courses over again? It's the same textbooks. Even the same models that are being used in the, uh, yeah, the clinical, cre- yeah, the credits they, are not transferable. That's disgusting. It's terrible, and it's got to only be so they can get paid again. And then I could give other examples of how terrible it is 
in terms of uh, making you go a fifth year. This thing where you can't just take a handful of credits. you got to take a whole year's worth of credits. What are you talking about? What if you're just like one class short of your degree? It's a, it, The game is rigged. And really, I think the federal government should start to look at it as I, – I, I don't want to say something incendiary on your show, Chuck, but this is not – this is not proper. What's going on? So, so the, you're right, Harry. And the concern that I think all of us have is, is the fact that it, it, it kind of revolves back to the economy. So let's assume that at some future point in time, if things do slow down, which it you know sounds like it, they are to a certain degree, um, and and that you know more jobs than people yeah. kind of flips to more people than jobs. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, what happens to these college graduates or the college or those that have recently graduated from college? You know, all of a sudden, those job opportunities are are not going to be there right. as they were, say, just a couple of years ago. And, Chuck, we know this horror movie because we lived it. We lived it uh, not a decade ago. The The other thing that that's – we'll talk about it after the break, but there's another scary component to this, and that is the fact that – how many people, if you've accumulated because you yeah, how about went the re- five years? How about the repayment of the debt? That's what I'm getting to. That's the nightmare. What if you have $200,000? We'll just use that figure in college debt, and they want $2,500 a month for the rest of your life. Who? You can't even buy a home because you won't qualify debt to equity ratio. Uh, I believe, just like you and I talked about the um, the dot com bubble. The this is a do you agree this is a bubble? You know, we, we've talked about this, and Harry, I, I, I'm, I'm erring on the side of caution here, but I'm, I'm starting to think that the way this could potentially play out, it, it could be. Because think about this, for, we'll talk about mortgage rates in a second, but the cost of buying a home is more expensive now than it was a year ago, and True. the fact of the matter is, you have to come up with more. Your, your your monthly mortgage payment is higher, so that's going to push out, you know, a lot of people that won't, quote, qualify. Yeah, so I, I think to answer your question, you know, this could be, you know, a, a in the future an, an event that we're not looking forward to. If that yeah, makes I think any if sense. it's 1.4-some trillion now, I think at least half of that number can't afford and are finding creative ways to be in forbearance, deferred emergency um, plea cases. It's really um, – It's I, I believe it's a crisis. It's, it's not a great formula for no, success. That's for all. sure. And it was wonderful. They made it really easy, and you could get the money, and then you could get the degree. But, wow, the, the, um, the pain at the end is tough. Let's take our break. We'll be right back. One more power segment with Chuck Malamut straight ahead for all of your financial planning needs. Turn to the official, the exclusive financial advisor for the Hurley in the Morning program, Chuck Malamut, the managing director of his group, the Malamut Group, at Morgan Stanley's Northfield, New Jersey office, 609-383-2010 for all of your financial planning needs. WPG Talk Radio 104.1 is South Jersey's talk station and your dependable source for local information when you need it. Listen for South Jersey news updates every 30 minutes while you're at work. Your local AccuWeather forecast around the clock. Traffic updates every afternoon and all weekend long. And free unlimited local news at WPGTalkRadio.com. WPG Talk Radio 104.1, South Jersey's talk station. This is Michael Medved. I'm here with Mike Stahl from Health Markets, helping folks find the right Medicare coverage. The news reports say that the rates might be going down. The government projects the cost of Medicare plans will decrease this year. So you have to ask yourself, are you getting the best rate? Health Markets offers a free service with access to thousands of Medicare plans nationwide to help folks maximize their benefits and save money. What is it people need to keep in mind? Enrollment in the right plan is not automatic. With so many Medicare options, it can be confusing. My advice, don't go it alone. Get unbiased help to find a plan that may cost less and cover more with lower co-payments, more choices like dental and vision, and the freedom to choose your doctors. With the enrollment deadline only weeks away, it's important to act now. Our Health Markets Medicare assistance is free. Thanks, Mike. This is Michael Medved for Health Markets. For your free Medicare assistance, call 800-648-8750. That's 800-648-8750. 
800-648-8750. Message and data rates may apply. TNC and privacy terms can be found at babbel.com slash terms. Please don't text and drive. Welcome to this Spanish mini lesson number three with Babbel, the number one selling language learning app. Let's talk about the weather. Can you repeat after Babbel? ¿Cómo está el tiempo? ¿Cómo está el tiempo? That means, how's the weather? You can say, hace sol. It's sunny. Can you repeat that? Hace sol. Hace sol. Or you can say, llueve. It's raining. Let's try it. Llueve. Llueve. Congratulations. You're starting to speak Spanish. Whether it's Spanish, French, German, Polish, or more, Babbel's award-winning technology is the easy way to speak confidently in a new language. You'll learn weather and so much more with Babbel. You can try Babbel for free. Download the app or text DOWNLOAD to 484848. Text DOWNLOAD to 484848 to try Babbel for free. That's D-O-W-N-L-O-A-D to 484848. Are you drowning in IRS tax debt? I owe the IRS $37,000. Get ready for a toll-free hotline. Take advantage of new IRS tax forgiveness programs that may protect you from IRS collection agencies. They have the power to garnish your wages, put liens on your property, and levy your bank account. Civic Tax Relief can help protect you from the IRS. Civic Tax Relief basically represented me against the IRS, and by the time everything was completed, I didn't owe the IRS anything. Find out about the Fresh Start program that is now available through Civic Tax Relief. Civic Tax Relief's special tax hotline can help you discover all the relief programs available for free. I would recommend anyone who has a tax problem to contact Civic Tax Relief. Just call 800-315-9956. 800-315-9956. Don't wait. Call now. 800-315-9956. 800-315-9956. On the next Markley and Van Camp, you know how shaming doesn't work? Well, we're all supposed to be loving. Except there's a new study claiming shaming smokers will help them quit. Markley and Van Camp, this afternoon at 1. Now, Harry Hurley on WPG Talk Radio 104.1. Chuck, when you talk about on your program for all these years about how when the American economy is really cooking, you call the the stool and the rungs of the stool, uh, one of them is real estate. Is real estate right now in a precarious moment? It is, and you're starting to see it's 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 softening um, in in parts of the country that were you know very very hot, and and I think Harry. Um, a lot of that is, you know, the flipper, so to speak. I mean, I, I think they're they're taking it on the chin to a certain degree because it's this purely interest rate driven because well, of the increases. Think, think about it. the The average thirty year fixed rate mortgage um, a year ago was three point nine two percent, which you know, um, on a hundred thousand dollar loan represented a monthly payment of four hundred seventy three dollars. You know, the, the average 30-year today uh, was just shy of 5%. It was 4.81%, representing a $525 monthly uh, principal and interest payment on that same 100000 So it says, well, you say, well, geez, it doesn't sound like $50 a month is a lot, but $50 a month times 12 months times 30 years, you know, adds up to be a significant amount of money. And I think as you uh, said it, uh, just not too long ago, in, in today's discussion and in prior discussions, the the fact is that there's so many people that were sort of on the edge of qualifying that now with these higher rates, um, they're less likely to qualify, and and so that kind of throws sort of a a, a lot of people to the sidelines that can no longer you know, buy that home. And I, and I think you're starting to see real estate, you know, softening up here a little bit. Um, so, and, and, and you look at like risk assets, for instance, I mean, you think about what was the big rage a year ago last Thanksgiving? I mean, you, you sat at the dinner table, you know, with your uh, f- f- uh, family and extended, you know, extended families and the rage was Bitcoin. Yes. Think about Bitcoin traded to I never, twenty. I, I never trusted that. It traded to twenty thousand, yes. and now it's off literally eighty percent of from that number. Harry, it's trading like thirty five hundred, roughly thirty nine hundred, somewhere in that range. And um, and we're we're starting to see a lot of evidence where it's getting more expensive to mine Bitcoin than than it is to just go out and buy it or trade it. So I, I think that you know. 
I think there's a time and a place for for everything, and and that was clearly, you know, a risk asset. And the fact of the matter is that, you know, Bitcoin is behaving the way it is now because it's you know it it's risk, and we not we but the the uh, investors are looking for risk adverse type assets. Chuck, I never understood the cryptocurrency because we we think about the American currency. At one point, backed by gold. At one point, backed by silver. Now it's backed by basically the good faith and the fact that we've never defaulted. And that's pretty amazing when you think about it. So now it's a note. It's not backed by a precious metal or anything. But I will take 240-some years of, of American uh, good faith as as some currency to trade. And I use that term figuratively, not literally. But on the cryptocurrency, Chuck, remember I would say to you, just like the dot-com era, I would say, Chuck, how are these numbers so big? What's there? I said, am I wrong? I'm the layperson on the panel. But there's no there there. And then pop goes the balloon. Pop goes the bubble. I, I felt that way about this cryptocurrency. Well, it's, it's you, know, you'll, you, have, you know, you have the crypto lovers. And what happens is I think, Harry, you know, because we're older, you know, the, you know our children and in that generation are, are more of a believer – um, and more suspect to the, the quote the banking system, and you know I think blockchain technology does does make a lot of sense and will help speed transactions. Um, but we, you know we could we could devote a whole uh, a whole hour to to cryptos. Um, but the f- I, I think the biggest rub that I have in it is for, forget the technology for a second. You know, to, to bring a, a company public, you know, an IPO, initial public offering, you, you have to have, you know, all your ducks in line. You have to, you know, hire, you know, an advisor, you know, advisory firm. You know, you have all kinds of legal to clear. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to clear all these channels through the, SC, the SEC, the NASD, FINRA, and none of the like. And, and off you go, you know, and, and you take your company from being private to, to public. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it takes time, resources, and energy. With a lot of transparency. Oh yeah, for sure. Now the, and oversight the, now and regulation in the crypto world, they have what is referred to as ICOs, initial coin offerings, and initial an ICO can come to market, you know, virtually with a with a white paper. Mm. Uh, so, you know, you like a one cut sheet. You can create a white paper and come with your own crypto. Um, so it's, it's it's sort of like the wild wild west, and 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 I think the one thing that you know we need to be you know cautious of is that unfortunately you know there's a lot of really really bad people in this world and you need to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it so um you know we we can like i said i think if we have uh the you know the younger generation i think you know they can come in maybe in an hour we can talk about it and i think it'd be very enlightening for for all of us but I, I clearly am not the expert with with cryptocurrency i i agree with you on that one fair, fair to say you're not a fan um, I, I'm a fan of blockchain. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not so much a fan of, of, of the cryptos because I, I really, you know, if you put your money someplace, you want to know what you're doing and why right. you're doing it. Totally agree. Time, Chuck, about three minutes. Time to talk about themes that may shape the 2019 investment outlook. So, you know, Harry, as you know, we have, you know, lived through in the, over the past, you know, month, six weeks, uh, some very, very tumultuous times. In, in not only the, the stock market, but also the, the bond market as well. Um, you know, having said all that, again, not to be repetitive, are, are we in fact enter, are we in a bear market now? Or are we in fact, you know, in sort of taking, taking a pause? I, I want to believe, um, you know, because you and I are sort of the eternal optimists here, that, that um, you know, that we are taking a pause here. So, you know, you have... Uh, you know, the economy could slow down. Corporate earnings growth could, you know, is probably going to slow down a little bit next year, but still should remain somewhat positive. You know, trade issues, and I know you, Kirk, talked about it in the last hour. We've we've talked about it extensively. I mean, it's a big weekend. You know, you, you think about, you know, the, the meeting on Sunday, and, it, you know, it, it could, you know, the results of that could be really, really ugly um, or could be uh, very, very good. Mm-hmm. Or somewhere in between. So, you know, trade issues do represent a significant threat to the global economy and, and possibly, you know, the equity markets. And I think we have seen that to a certain degree. Um, you know, as well, interest rates and inflation, uh, they're 
both going to probably increase somewhat modestly next year, but shouldn't you know represent a serious roadblock you know to, to equity. So you know, having said all that, uh, we think that um, the equity market should do relatively well uh, over the next you know twelve to eighteen months. But I mean, the problem is right now we're we've we're now at that risk off. Um, th- that that environment is where we are right now. So the question is, how much longer are we going to be in that risk off environment? Um, we've been there the last couple months. Equity prices we talked about, you know, down over ten percent. Oil prices decreasing, credit, you know, widening credit spreads, um, you know, all sort of detrimental. But you know, you think about the, you know, think about the corrections we've had from two thousand and fifteen through through 2017. We kind of talked about that, you know, earlier today. Uh, we do s- expect volatility to remain somewhat elevated over the next couple months. And, and, and don't be surprised, Harry, if you see some additional declines, you know, in, in stock prices and other risk assets and you know, like the crypto that we just kind of talked about. Um, you know, equity markets, we think, are, are oversold. I think you saw that yesterday. Now, yesterday was yesterday sort of a a, a bounce back where you had short covering or, you know, because there wasn't any, you know, any real significant news over the weekend other, I take that back, other than the fact that we had, in, you know, very, very strong Black Friday numbers. How about $7.9 billion for Cyber Monday? And then Monday, Cyber Monday. But, t- but But today, you know, as I look at the pre-markets, the markets are down somewhat. So but how about um, $7.9 billion in one day? Yesterday, Chuck, over a billion something more than a year ago, and that was a record then. Should that make for, for you like, would you would you would think? But I mean, it's n- not enough. N- n- well, one day does does not answer. But that showed a lot of confidence, a well, lot of consumer it, confidence. You know, the, the consumers, you know, have money to yeah. spend right now. But think about, and it's the time of year that you will spend it. Think about we Final talked minute. we talked about the equity markets. The equity the stock market is what a leading indicator, right? So, having said that, the stock market is saying, okay, while well, things are good now, looking through the rearview mirror, maybe not so over the next six to twelve months. So, you know, so so what we need right now, Harry, is sort of a catalyst. Trade, you know, trade easing trade tensions as an example, uh, firmer global growth. Um, so, so we think that the market, even though it has some headwinds you know, to deal with, uh, with trade issues being on the top of the list, we, you know, we, we're we're watching the Brexit negotiations as well, and other geopolitical issues. Um, we're concerned about the Fed overstepping their bounds, yep. and they could put the brakes on economic growth. But having said all that. Uh, so while you have some near-term caution, a lot of money moving to cash, we think you know you have to stay with that pro-growth uh, position and overweight stocks relative to fixed income. And the bottom line, fundamentals for equities Harry, remain relatively good, but we need a little more clarity before we come you know before we come become more optimistic with the future. Fabulous content today, Chuck. Thank you. Harry, thanks. Appreciate you uh, not giving me a hard time about our little football pool. We'll save that for next for next week. <laughs> uh, I will tell your listening audience that you know uh, this is a marathon; it's not a sprint. And you and I have played all season, and we are one game one game apart. Yes, so, sir. Who's one game up? Uh, you are. That's right. <laughs> Chuck Malamut is the managing director. He leads his team, the Malamut Group, at Morgan Stanley's Northfield, New Jersey office. Six zero nine three eight three twenty ten. Chuck. Phenomenal appearance. Thank All right, you, thanks. See you next week. Thank you for everything. When we come back, Atlantic City Councilman at Large, George Tibbet. The topic will be Atlantic City Mayor Frank Gilliam, Atlantic City Councilman at Large, Jeffrey Fauntleroy, the near term uh, stakes. Uh, and if you were with us at the end of the last hour, Councilman Tibbet floated a concept that not only will the mayor not receive an increase that he's been asking for to the tune of forty to sixty thousand dollars on top of his already one hundred and three thousand dollar salary, Councilman Tibbet is calling for a cut in his salary similar to the amount that he was looking to increase the salary. A lot to talk about. We'll unpack it next. Early in the morning, WPG Talk Radio one oh four point one. And on the WPG Talk Radio app. Health Update with Robin Stoloff. Brought to you by the law offices of Richard A. Stoloff, Linwood, and Philadelphia. 
If you're a habitual soda drinker, it may be time to cut back. Most people realize soda is bad for them, but almost half of all Americans drink it every day. The excess consumption of sugary drinks can have a number of negative effects on our overall health. Soda can cause tooth decay, kidney damage, and weight gain, and that can lead to diabetes, heart disease, or stroke. The empty calories in soft drinks do not make you feel any fuller. In fact, they may increase your appetite. If you're trying to lose weight, that certainly won't help. And while diet soda is lower in calories, it can create more cravings and disrupt your metabolism. So the next time you find yourself reaching for your favorite cola, try a healthier alternative like water with lemon or green tea. It will benefit your health in the long run. I'm Robin Stoloff for Health Update. Health Update with Robin Stoloff, brought to you by the law offices of Richard A. Stoloff in Linwood. Attention you expect, results you deserve. Wendy's knows when it comes to fries, the more the better. Because people just can't get enough of their favorite hamburger sidekick. So for a limited time, Wendy's is giving you any size fry for just a dollar. That's a small, medium, even a large order of natural cut sea salted goodness for just a buck. Any size you like for the same little price. But a deal this good won't last long. So get any size fry for one dollar from Wendy's today. At participating Wendy's for a limited time, a la carte only, excludes top fries. Price and participation may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. And now, a page from the Diary of Flo. Dear Diary, I got the brush off again. I don't get it. Is there something wrong with the way I wave? Elbow wrist, elbow wrist. Why won't that little basset hound acknowledge me? I'm friendly. I give everyone peace of mind when I protect their homes through Progressive. He should be jumping for joy when I walk by. Save an average of 17% on car insurance when you bundle home and auto through Progressive. Maybe it's me. No, it's him. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Discounts not available in all states or situations. Let's think about customization presented by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Liberty Mutual customizes your auto insurance so you only pay for what you need. So why aren't more things in life customizable? Why isn't a burger cheaper when you ask for no onions? I don't want them. So shouldn't you deduct the price of the onions? Right? Otherwise, I'm paying for the onions, but I'm not receiving any onions. Go to LibertyMutual.com for a customized quote and you could save. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Coverage is underwritten by Liberty Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates. Equal housing insurer. Protecting data across modern decentralized networks presents challenges that traditional backup solutions can't handle. At best, you'll waste time and money managing multiple solutions. At worst, gaps in coverage will leave your data vulnerable. Barracuda Backup is a single cloud-integrated solution that simplifies the backup process and allows data replication to anywhere on your network, a private cloud, Barracuda's cloud, or to the AWS public cloud. Reclaim your data. Try Barracuda Backup free at barracuda.com slash backup. This is Atlantic City's talk station, WPG Talk Radio 104.1. He really enunciated that. They're very exciting. Thank you, great one. 52 minutes past the hour. Atlantic City Councilman at Large, George Tibbet is here. Let me uh, take this opportunity to just share with you some of the genesis of this. Let me close out one item and go back to where I was. Um, last night, with the hashtag Ready, Set, Steal, because I knew, and two bad actors stole our work within 20 minutes. Then they have the audacity to send me breaking news my breaking news to me as their breaking news. They're hilarious. But in any event, the Atlantic City Democratic Committee voted 27 to 3 to ask Atlantic City Mayor Frank Gilliam and Councilman at Large Jeffrey Fauntleroy II to step down from their elected positions, to take a pause until the final disposition of their violent criminal charges. They're facing charges of assault and harassment. If they refuse to step down, the resolution and the copy of it is right on my Facebook page, Harry Hurley. You can read the entire piece. The If they refuse to step down, the resolution calls for New Jersey governor and lieutenant governor to take action. What we talked about an hour ago with Councilman Tibbet is the possibility the council could look at – see it, Chuck – council could look at decreasing the mayor's salary. Would not be something he tried to put himself in for a forty some to sixty some thousand dollar a year increase on top of the hundred and three thousand that he's almost collected for one year that I don't believe he's earned. He's been he's been I think you could make the case in the Atlantic City Council, mayor council, former government, he's the worst mayor in the history of Atlantic City. And I think you could even go back many, many uh decades, generations even in the mayor uh, commission form of government. 
this is the worst. I mean, it's just terrible. Absolutely terrible. And he wants a 40 to 50, 60 some thousand dollar raise for it. Atlantic City Councilman George Tibbet is here. George, that's madness, isn't it? Yeah, it's very it's very offensive, Harry. And I'll send you the email when we get off the phone today. So you have it with the complete salary ordinance where he put together every single job position in the city. And and you would think the first job title would be mayor, business administrator, your chiefs and your director says. And way in the middle, you have the mayor's salary from 140 to 167, while at the same time lowering just about everybody else's salary. I mean, I, you know, my, my position is, and, you know, I'm going to put this up on a resolution. I'm going to do it. And people can vote their conscience, you know, 7% more than the council president. That's it. And then when, when you get a mayor in there, that's going to do the job. Someone that's not going to just go out for free dinners and cut ribbons and give the city a black eye. You give a good mayor, a good fair salary. You give a bad mayor that's useless. And you, you said it, Harry. This, he's going down as the worst mayor in the history of Atlantic City. He doesn't deserve the $37,000 a year pay that I propose to give him. He's not going nowhere. He's not going to step down. He's never had a job in the last 10 years. You think he's leaving this one? That's my story. Look at his yeah. financial. Look at the financial disclosures. He lied to all of us and said he had businesses and everything. No, his only job was what? A car wash? And he had some financial interest in, in boys basketball camp. So you're making money off kids, which that's a story for another day. So, so, in, ter so, so in terms of this resolution that you'll proffer and present to your colleagues – this would call for the mayor of Atlantic City's salary to be changed to be 7% higher than the council president. That's correct, Harry. Wow. That's um that's, I'm typing as we speak. I'm um this is a this is a Harry and, and let's not forget this isn't personal anymore. This is job performance. We know to be factual that this guy has a very bad angry streak the way he treats women, and we know he's a thief. George Tibbet can sit here on your radio and call him a thief right now today, and he can't sue me. We all know he stole 10 checks from me. We all know he signed them. We all know he put them in his account. Sue me. Sue me. And the first deposition question will be, well, why'd you sign his name to checks and put them in your account and not tell him about it? The guy's a thief. We know that. All this today that Atlantic City has experienced, I blame on law enforcement. Why haven't they done their jobs with the checks that he stole? They've already got proof that he signed them, he deposited them in his account, and that he stole them. Well, my question would be— And nothing's or, being done. But and nothing's being done. My comment People would be— sick how, to their stomach. How do we know? How do we know nothing's being done? What if there's a oh, federal— on, Harry. I'm just Harry. saying, what if there is a federal criminal investigation going on right now? And I will say this. I cannot break it under my absolute 100 percent track record of when I say learn and confirmed. But it's my understanding that a major member of the Philadelphia media is about to drop uh, a story. This comes from three sources of mine in Trenton, Councilman at Large Tibbet, that they're ready to drop a story that the mayor of Atlantic City is under federal criminal investigation. Now, I say that. Not learning confirmed, but multiple sources are telling me. So what if something is going on and we just don't know it? Well, Harry, it, 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 to live in the city, to have people come up to you and say, why did the mayor attack somebody? We don't know what happened. But the fact that they lead the question with attack and not what happened, you know, that's the black eye that the city has. It, it's so disheartening. I mean, it, it, people look upon Atlantic City. You know, it should be an honor to be a councilman that your peers selected you to, to represent the city and, and and it's turning into almost an embarrassment please please don't call me councilman Tibbet. just call me george when i'm in public You're like it shouldn't be like that it has to, it's an honor that you, your peers selected you to protect them and you got to dig down deep and keep fighting and do the job that the people uh, ask you to do like i said during my campaign trail I didn't like the job that Don Guardian was doing, and I said I was working to get rid of him because I felt it was another cut-ribbon type guy, didn't do no meat and potatoes, it was all the state. And I said the same thing, right to Frank, right there at, uh, what was it, the uh, West Side uh, Civic Association meeting. And if you do the same thing, we'll take you out too. 
And you see, we're keeping our promises. George, what is the, we only have 30 seconds. What is the council president's salary? I think it's 1500 hours more than council. I think he's about 28, 29,000. Wow. So this would be this would be a massive massive cut in pay. For, but he's not worth he's not worth 32,000, Harry. And in your he's estimation, city council has the absolute authority to lower that salary. We we set all salary ordinances. I don't know why we wouldn't be able to do this. It's not punishment. It's what the job is worth. You, you got three, two deputies. I've never seen two deputy chiefs of staff. You have another secretary. You, his office is costing us about six to six hundred to seven hundred thousand dollars a year. When you throw in the cop, the cop's costing over two thousand dollars a year. When you throw in his benefit package, overtime, and everything else. To be so I got to put a cop. WPGG, I got to put a cop Atlantic with the mayor City, so he don't hurt somebody else. WPGG ninety seven point three HD three Millville. Take care. Everything you. you need to know in six minutes starts now. Wow. He's doing tremendous damage to our criminal justice system. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. That's what President Trump tweeted about special counsel Robert Mueller, again calling the Russia probe a phony witch hunt, writing Mueller's horribly and viciously treating people, ruining lives. This after Mueller accused former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort of lying to the FBI multiple times instead of cooperating with his investigation. Mueller's office argues in a filing that the government will also file a detailed sentencing.